every three years this lesson shows up this gospel lesson beware of those scribes who walk around wearing long flowing robes yeah i get it <laughs> those who want to be treated with respect to have the privileged places to be seated mm, i have a seat up there don't I? <laughs> yeah Amadori picked a good time to be away. <laughs> and it's also the Sunday after the presidential election. She owes me one. <laughs> mm. It is an interesting set of lessons. We have our lesson from the Old Testament Kings talking about a woman, a widow woman. And we have Mark's Gospel give us another story about a widow woman. And it's important that you keep in mind that in the hierarchy of society, at the very, very bottom would have been widows and children. A little bit more than cattle. They were the lowest of the lows, and they didn't really matter. As I was preparing for this service and looking at the lessons and then having walked through would be to ignore the weak. But I think the gospel challenges us to be honest. It challenges us to overcome our fears and to be brave. I remember 16 years ago when Barack Obama won his first term to be elected, a woman in my congregation at the 7.30 a.m. service, I didn't know God got up that early. <laughs> 7.30 service, she was also chair of the altar guild, which meant she was a formidable force to be reckoned with. She came up to me, she was very teary-eyed, she was very serious, she was very broken hearted, and she looked at me and said, I don't think I can pray for Barack, our president. And I got quiet, and I just listened to her talk and tell me what her thoughts were. And when she was finished, I spoke. And I told her, I said, you don't have to. I don't want you doing anything you feel uncomfortable doing, but you no longer get to lead the prayers of the people on Sunday morning. Because one of the things that the Episcopal Church does, and one of the things that I am so proud of our tradition, it doesn't matter who is in office we pray for. She looked at me and said, I can't lead the prayers. I said, no. If you can't pray for the president, whoever that is, then you can't lead the prayers. She went away. She showed up in my office the next day. And she said, I thought about what you said. And I'm going to try. Good. I'm going to try to pray for our president. Good. You can lead the prayers again. That interchange has stayed with me. It's one thing when you're on the winning side and you have the outcome that you want. It's another thing when you're on the losing side and the losing side demands that you still stay engaged, that you overcome your fears, you overcome your doubts, and still want to come to the table to be fed. Not an easy thing to do. In our Old Testament lesson, we have the story of a widow woman who has next to nothing. Elisha comes to her and says, give me something to drink. She says, okay, water I can do. Now give me something to eat. Well, you don't understand. I'm down to my last morsel. There's barely enough for one meal for my son and myself, and then we go home and we wait to die. We're going to starve to death. And Elijah says, 
overcome your fears, trust in God. The pot with the oil and the pot with the meal won't run out. Overcome your fears. Overcome your doubts. And then we have this other story in the gospel from Mark, where Jesus is berating the wealthy and berating those who have the fine clothes and sit in the favorite seats and all those things. And they sit down at the treasury and he's watching the people. They're coming by and they're dropping off their offering. And some people make a big to do. Look at me, look how much I'm putting in. That's right, I'm rich, I'm important. Look at me. And then the widow woman who has nothing comes forward two copper coins were told worth a penny and she offers it she doesn't know where her next meal is coming from she doesn't know where she's going to be able to sleep tonight and all that she had she offered to the Lord and her offering was everything she overcame her fears. She overcame her doubts. And she made a complete sacrifice of her life. And Jesus is pointing out that all those who gave from their abundance, she truly gave the most because she gave everything. Not a portion. She gave everything. It's not easy for us to overcome our fears. It's not easy for us to overcome our doubts. What if there's not enough? What if there's not a tomorrow? What if there's an emergency? What if I need it? And people who live in fear close themselves off from the rest of the world. What if there's not enough? See, often we hear this le the lesson about the widow's might, as it's called, as a stewardship pitch to encourage people to be generous. But she's not being generous. She's being sacrificial. She is giving everything away. It's not an easy thing to do. When you have to choose between fears and your doubts versus a relationship when do you have to choose between the doctrine and dogma of what the church teaches and the relationship choose the relationship choose the relationship every time now that may sound strange having the priest tell you choose relationships over doctrine and dogma but I'm here to tell you, there's a reason. Our faith is based on a relationship with Jesus Christ. The church will tell you what the doctrine and dogma of that is, and that has changed over time. And the reason why it's changed is because we've been wrong. We've been wrong so many times. We were wrong when the church said that slavery was okay. We were wrong when the church said that women could not be ordained. We were wrong when we, the church said you couldn't be divorced and remarried and take the sacraments. We were wrong when the church said that, that lesbian and gay people were less than human. When we have to choose, overcome our fears and choose the relationship. Thursday of every week, I meet with a group of former parishioners. We go to Shoney's in Morristown. And we sit down and we have coffee. And for about an oh, hour, hour and a half, we sit and we talk. And we solve the problems of the world. <laughs> and one of the things that I've noticed with this group is that all of them there are about 20 years older than me and several of them 
have various degrees of dementia. I call it my dementia coffee morning. <laughs> and I show up every Sunday because, or maybe every Thursday, because I care about these people and I dearly love them. And we are on absolute polar opposites of the political spectrum. They're as red as red can be, and I'm as blue as blue can be, but we still show up and comfort and care for each other. And when one of my former parishioners tells me he can't figure out the remote control on his TV, I'll go and I'll reprogram. And when another one tells me that I've been locked out of my computer, I need a new password, and I need to connect to my emails, I'll go over and I'll do those things for them. You do those things because you care about each other. And it doesn't matter if you agree or disagree. The commandment that Jesus gave us is simple. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your strength, and all your soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. And who's your neighbor? Everyone. Everyone is your neighbor. And it makes sense. If each of us are made in the image of God, we have an obligation to care and love for each other. We can disagree. We can disagree on policy. We can disagree on elections. We can disagree on everything, but we have to stay engaged. We cannot withdraw from one another. And if you withdraw, they don't hear the hurt and the pain. If you stay engaged and you stay present, they see you. And they may make them uncomfortable, but they see you and they hear you. The widow showing up and putting her two copper coins in there had to get under the skin of the wealthy. They knew. They knew that theirs was an offering. Hers. That's a sacrifice. That's a statement of faith. I trust and believe in God, not knowing if I'm going to have my next meal or not. People giving out of abundance, eh, I'll never miss it. Not a big deal. Makes me look good in front of others. I think about that woman in my parish in Baton Rouge, and when she came and told me with tears in her eyes, I don't think I can pray for our president. And then the next day, she came back, and when she said, I can try, I count that as a wonderful, grace-filled moment. Somebody who overcame her fears, somebody who overcame her doubts, and said, I'm gonna stay at the table, I'm gonna stay engaged, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray for the president. I love the fact that in the Episcopal Church, we pray for our elected leaders. And we pray for them not caring which party affiliation is involved. We pray because they need our prayers. And it doesn't matter. I have survived every presidential election since Dwight Eisenhower. I survived Kennedy's assassination. I survived Nixon's resignation. I survived Gore Bush versus Bush. And the, and the days go on and nothing really that big matters. What matters is the relationships. And if you stay connected to one another and hold on tight to one another, even when you disagree, hold on tighter because you love them. I can show up every Thursday morning and have coffee and laugh and be with people I care about, even though I disagree with them. And they miss me if I'm not there because they care about me even though they disagree with me. 
I've never met any president in person. I've never met any candidate for president in person. I don't have that kind of personal connection. I do have connections with people who I live with in Morristown. I do have connections with parishioners who I care and love. If I have to choose, I'm going to choose the relationship every single time. Fear will blind you and give you excuses not to be faithful. Overcoming your doubts, overcoming your fears, reaching out in love to your neighbor, that has the power to transform the world. I can be disappointed. I can be angry. But I'm never going to give up on loving my neighbor.